and welcome to this paranormal Halloween episode where we continue to investigate the hideous evil that is overclocking Durons and Athlon processors. In the last video, if you saw it, I overclocked a Duron a little bit and took some benches. So that was a Duron 1300 Morgan core, and this time it's a Athlon 1300 Thunderbird core. So the first thing I'm going to do is bench this at its normal clock speed, and then have a quick look back to the overclocked bench that we got off the Duron, just to see if, you know, I think the Duron was $118, I think, if my memory serves me, and, and the Athlon was 300 and something. So could that simple overclock make the humble Duron outperform the Athlon at stock speed, making it an absolute bargain if you could get it to do that. And like I did with the Duron, I've reconnected the level one bridges using the pencil trick. And that means that our clock multiplier is unlocked so we can fiddle with that when we come to overclock. A quick recap, the Duron at its stock speed got a 3D mark of 9,200. And then with the moderately unsuccessful overclock that I got it up to 1442, so an extra 142 megahertz, that upped the 3D Mark score to 9600, so we got an extra 400. Okay, so the bench is running for the Athlon. So you have to bear in mind that the Athlon cost $318 and the Duron cost $118 when they first came out. So there's a $200 price difference that's nearly two-thirds more expensive for the Athlon so it'd be interesting to see and there you go look at that 9,364 3D marks for the Athlon at stock speed and we got 9,600 from the overclock Duron so for that simple overclock we've got ourselves an extra 236 3D marks so of course I guess that's kind of general performance we should get a better idea of how that would reflect in your gameplay when we run the Dungeon Siege benchmark which is what I'm going to do now. <laughs> Looking at this benchmark gives you quite a good sort of picture of how the things perform against each other. Originally, the Duron running at 1300 stock speed got an average frame rate of 38.62 frames a second. So giving it that bit of an overclock, that upped that to 42.87 frames a second, which is not a bad little increase at all. So you're getting an extra five frames a second or so. But then on the Athlon, which, you know, with its extra level 2 cache, comes in at around about the same kind of performance as the overclock Duron, so it's 41.35 average frames a second compared to 42.87. So that kind of gives you maybe a picture of how much work that level 2 cache does in things like gaming, just moving the information around between the processor and the memory in a more efficient way, and you kind of nullified the effects of that by giving the Duron a gentle overclock and for a processor at a third of the cost of the Thunderbird you can see what a bargain it was if you were to buy one of these back in the day and do a bit of tweaking yourself and I still think there's a bit more I could milk out of that Duron as well with a bit more experimentation and some better cooling. Into the BIOS we go and see if we can make it go any faster. So things are a bit strange in here for this Athlon, a bit different to what I was expecting to see. So the first thing is the number of multipliers is different to what it was in the Duron, which was strange. And the highest multiplier was 12.5, which is even stranger because when this thing posts, it's telling me that the thing is running at 13 times 100. And there isn't even a multiplier for 13. There's only a multiplier for 12.5. So there's something a bit odd going on here. I did wonder whether I'd done something crazy with my pencil trick and not done it properly or something like that. So I went back in and rubbed it all off and checked it again and did it carefully and came back in and still had the same results. So I know there's a multitude of different settings you could do here, but I'm just going to leave it on 12.5 and this one's just going to be an overclock on the bus speed. Uh, to begin with, just to see that it's sort of working and I can overclock it, I just set the bus speed to 110, left the multiplier at 12.5. Now, to my mind, that should be 1,375 megahertz. So let's see what it says on post. And there we go. 14, 
30 megahertz. So yeah, it is definitely running at a multiplier of 13 and it's multiplying 13 by 110 and it's giving you 1430. So that 12.5, I don't know what that is. Uh, it doesn't look like the pencil trick is working the way it should be. And even though I've done it again carefully, I think, but I think for this overclock, it's just going to have to be the front side bus and the voltage. There wasn't really much to show, so we'll just gloss over it. But basically, I stepped through just increasing the front side bus speed and went from 1430 to 1443 to 1480 to 1510. And eventually we got to 1560, which wasn't a bad little overclock just doing that. And then we started to get problems. So 1560 running into 3D Mark 2001, we start to get this where the screen is just locking and you're getting crazy little artifacts dotted about there. So the next thing was just to leave it as it is and go in and start boosting the voltage to see if you can get that stable. So I was lazy and I did jumps, increments of two this time because I figure if it was running okay at 1.85, on the Duron, it'll probably be okay on 1.85 on here. So I jumped it from 1.750 to 1.8, and that wasn't enough because it really went haywire this time and it just got complete screen corruption. And so I ended up just pushing it all the way up to the top to the 1.85, and that seemed to stabilize it. Uh, 1560 looks like it's going to be our speed, and it seemed to be okay. So it's time to run through the complete 3D Mark 2001 bench and see what score we get and see how it compares to the stock speed. So a little bit earlier we saw that the stock speed got 3D Mark score of 9,364 and after the overclock we get 10,817. So that's an increase of 1,453 3D Marks. And I think the Dungeon Siege benchmark was even more pronounced on the Duron, so that sort of bodes well for a half decent frame rate boost after this overclock as well. I don't plan to leave these chips overclocked. I think that would be not a wise thing to do with aging technology like this and I want to keep them going as long as possible. But to prove that it is a stable overclock and that would be usable in the real world, I am going to do what I did with the Duron. It managed to get through 3D Mark 2001 okay, so I'm now going to put it into a loop which will give it a bit of a stress test. So this loops five times, and I think that worked out in about 40, 45 minutes of constant running under stress, and it survived that, didn't crash, and kept running quite happily. So I think we're reasonably safe in saying that this would have been a reasonably safe overclock to continue using. So gaming performance is probably the main reason why people would do such an overclock, though it was also in my case when I had my Athlon 850 to get past 1 gigahertz, just because I'd never seen such an amazing thing in my life. But it'd be interesting to see what kind of a gaming boost we get out of this when we run the Dungeon Siege benchmark, so that's next. <laughs> If you remember when we did the benchmark for Dungeon Siege before it was overclocked at its stock speed, we were getting 41.35 frames per second average. And now 49.04. So that's like eight frames a second average increase. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's something like a 16% increase in frame rate, which is not to be sniffed at at all. Now at this point, I had found this chip, which I didn't even know I had in an old case when I was looking for socket A motherboards, funnily enough, to do this overclock. So I had this old machine from ages ago that I bought basically because it was a beige case I thought I could do something with, but never really looked inside. And inside there was lurking this Athlon 1400 Thunderbird. So this was the last and fastest of the Thunderbirds, I believe. And the idea here was I was going to try and run this at stock speed and just see if the Athlon 1300 overclock beat it, which I'm pretty sure it would have. Unfortunately, I popped this into the case and it just wouldn't play ball. It's got a slightly different front side bus speed. I think it runs at 133 instead of 100. Uh, I'll can't see how it would be broken, but I'll keep on fiddling around with it. But unfortunately, I couldn't get it working for this benchmark, so we might come back to that at some point in the future. I guess all remains now is to just have a look and peruse the improvements that we managed to make with this little bit of a overclock. So we started off with the Duron, and it was running at 1300 MHz stock, and that gave us 9,200 3D marks and an average frames per second in the Dungeon Siege 
benchmark of 38.62. We then managed to increase that to a grand speed of 1442 MHz and that increased the 3D mark speed from 9200 to 9600 and we also got a few extra frames out of the Dungeon Siege benchmark moving up from 38.62 to 42.87 and then we brought the Athlon in at stock speed and that gave us 9364 3D marks and to begin with we got 41.35 as our average frame rate in Dungeon Siege which was comparable to the overclocked Duron but then we managed to get that up to a slightly better overclock of 1560 megahertz and that gave us a good boost in 3d mark moving from 9364 to 10817 and in dungeon siege we got from 41.35 frames per second average up to 49.04 so that was quite a nice little boost there so it was definitely worth overclocking these chips back in the day and you can see why they were so popular and certainly the duron you see why that was popular I mean, why buy an Athlon when you can just get a Duron and give it a few tweaks and you suddenly got something that goes faster? So it makes perfect sense. I wish I bought a Duron now. I could have saved myself some money. I was going to put a, a case badge on here, but there was already a case badge on the old blue case, so I just transferred that one over. So I feel like I need to put something on, so I've got from Geek and Spiel a nice little creative sticker here. Since there's a Sound Blaster live in here now and it's going to be a permanent resident, I think I can put this on here. And yes, that looks rather cool. So that pretty much wraps it up, I guess. It was quite a fun little experience going back to those little overclocks and remembering what it was all like. And yeah, definitely some good gains there. So as I said, I think in the first video, I'm going to stick the Dungeon Siege benchmark in its entirety on. It's only about three minutes long. If anybody who's remotely interested, it's quite a fun little watch. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you'll join me again for the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.